This crime story is a shocking one. When a father and son were out spending the day together, it was a warm and sunny beautiful day. Perfect conditions for eating ice cream. So what could possibly go wrong? Stick around for this one. It was around 12.10 midday on Wednesday the 3rd of August in the year of 2022 when a father named Curtis Ariaris and his three-year-old son would both leave the off-the-hook barber shop that's located on the 1200 block of Lee Street, NW, in southwest Atlanta. The pair decided to go on and get some ice cream together after getting their hair cut. However, the very last thing on both of their minds would be that one of them would be fighting a life or death situation. After all, all they were doing was simply enjoying a day out together. So, how could such an awful tragedy come into fruition? It probably never even crossed their thoughts, but sadly, that's where this nightmare story takes us. Shortly after the pair left the barbers, they both got into their vehicle and headed south down Peter Street. Now, Peter Street is the specific street that the barbers is located on, and so they got about half a mile or so down the road. And as they approached the junction between Peter Street and Chapel Street, a man in a blue Akia rolled up alongside them and then did something awful and all too familiar in modern day America. The man in the blue car opened fire with a 22 caliber handgun and it was as the shots rang out loudly, the man in the blue car then took off at speed, fleeing the scene. And that's when Curtis began checking himself to see if he was okay and luckily he was. But as he turned to look towards his son to make sure that he was okay, sadly, the same couldn't be said, as this beautiful little boy had been shot in the head. And now with pure fear, panic and confusion setting in, Curtis headed to the fire station 14 on Lee Street. And just a short while later, and even though this boy had been shot in the head, he was still conscious and breathing. This little boy was clearly fighting for his life and at such a young age, at just three years old. From the fire department, he was then immediately rushed into hospital to where unfortunately his condition worsened. And yeah, he was in a critical condition. And although he had many great medical minds surrounding him, a miracle happened and they managed to save the little boy's life. It was a true miracle. And even though it was touch and go, he was soon doing well and in a stable condition. And even though I can't find any further information on the child or his health updates, I'm guessing no news is good news. So who could have committed this disgusting and heinous act of violence? Well, that was the question the police needed answering. And so a criminal investigation was opened and underway. However, as the hours turned into days, the police still had nothing on the suspect driving the blue car. And so the police, they stepped up the hunt. Deputy Chief Charles Hampton Jr. A uh, little after 4 p.m. this afternoon, uh, APD officers responded to a person shot. Uh, what we know so far is that a father and his child were exiting a barber shop in the 200 block of Peter Street. Uh, once they left that location, they drove southbound on Peter Street. And what we have determined is that, that there was a car uh, following them. Uh, when they came to the intersection behind me at Peter's and Chapel, the car pulled alongside on the passenger side and began to open fire, uh, striking the two-year-old who was in the back seat. The father then drove down to fire station 14 on Lee Street, uh, where the child was transported to a local hospital. Uh, so right now we are looking for a blue in color Kia Optima. Uh, we know that that car after the shooting continued to travel southbound onto Peter Street. Uh, so we're asking anyone if they have any information uh, to call the Atlanta Police Department or they can call Crime Stoppers where they can't remain anonymous. Can you say anything about what led to the shooting? What sparked it? Yeah. And as you can, I mean, it's, it's still a very active scene. Uh, so we still have to piece together. We need to go back to the barbershop to figure out exactly if there's anything that uh, happened inside the barbershop. Uh, so again, very fluid. Uh, we have the dad. Uh, we're asking questions regarding uh, what happened, but it appears to be a targeted incident. It does not appear to be random at all. Uh, but again, it's still very early on in our investigation. Uh, we're still trying to uh, ascertain a lot of information at this time. It's safe to say the victim knew the victims knew the shooting. I, I can't say that. What I can say is that it appears to be a targeted 
uh, and said, I'm not sure of if they know one another, but it appears that uh, the shooters, in fact, wanted to uh, shoot uh, that the occupants in that vehicle. I didn't hear what you said, but where was the child struck? I didn't say. And everybody's obviously concerned about the child. How is the child? So right now we get report that the child is in critical to, uh, condition, uh, but stable. Uh, and so that's right now, that's a good sign for us. Uh, but again, uh, any gunshot uh, injuries to a child is concerning. Uh, so we'll just have to let the medical professionals do their job and we'll continue to stay updated on the condition of the child. But right now with the reports that we're receiving, uh, critical but stable. Was the father shot and is that child a male or female? Uh, right now, the, this, it only appears that the child was shot. Uh, it does not appear that the dad was uh, struck by any gunfire uh, and is a, a male child. Did the male shot with gunfire? I'm sorry? Did the dad respond with gunfire? Who was the only person who shot uh, the car? That... Uh, I, again, everything is still under investigation. Uh, it appears right now that the only the vehicle that fled the scene uh, was the uh, car that uh, fired shots. Was it just the dad and the child in the car or was it anybody else in the car? That's right now it's only the dad and the child. The police came out and stated that they believed that this was a targeted attack. All based on public CCTV footage that was collected by detectives. The police analysed hours of footage and eventually came to the conclusion that the blue car had been following Curtis's car from Peter Street just outside the barber shop. But what wasn't clear to the police was whether the man driving the blue Ikea had also been inside the barbers. Now the investigation had been underway for at least a couple of weeks or so, and that's when the police made a breakthrough in the case. Exit out the vehicle for me. Just put the phone down for us, please, so you don't get yourself hurt. Come back towards us. Any weapons on you? Get your hands away from your purse for me. Put them on top of your head. It is. Come over here. Back here. Over here. Check her down for me. You want to clear this? Yep. All right, let's roll. This is 24-year-old Contavious Wright, aka Dirty Tay, out of the rap collective 4PF, led by head honcho, Little Baby. Now for you people out there that don't know, Dirty Tay is a US so-called rapper. He's had a few songs out there, but nothing special. However, he does have a couple of songs with Little Baby himself. And so yeah, he was most definitely on the up and coming rise to fame within the rap scene. Put him in yeah, okay. he's got his phone and a big stack of cash in his pocket. Yeah. Yeah. He's got like, no weapons on him. Can you give a, Can you get that to my girlfriend, please? Right. As soon as, as soon as we get a chance, all right? I'll get the, the money out of your pocket and stuff. You got no weapons on him, right? Nah. Looks like me. Chef. Chef. I love you, bro. Right, I'll walk. Chef. Come back. Hey, follow this officer right here. Chef. Come on, come on. I love you for real, bro. Can I get my girlfriend a kiss out, please? You'll get in a second. Come on, buddy. You'll get in a second. Please. And on the 19th of August in the year of 2022, he was approached by officers in connection with the case. They believed he was the shooter, the man who was driving the blue Ikea. Dirty Tay was then booked into the Fulton County Jail on a dozen criminal accounts, including one criminal attempt to commit murder, aggravated assault, and first degree cruelty to a child, along with multiple gang related charges. <laughs> you would clearly think that being on the rise to fame, he would wipe his own ass clean and keep his own stink in the toilet. But no, not prankster Dirty Tay, because he's too gangster for any of that. Can I get my girlfriend a kiss out, please? Yeah. You'll, you'll get in a second, come on, buddy. You'll get in a second. Please. 
The police also believe that this could potentially be the first of many possible arrests involving rap gangs, as 4PF are believed to be one of many corrupt organisations that are strongly influenced by street crime. And if that is the case, then I guess it's only a matter of time before more criminal antics and shenanigans are exposed. Anyways, the rapper Contavious Wright was officially sent to prison on the 26th of April. He was eligible for the death penalty if convicted on all top counts. And not wanting to take the risk, Tay thought it best to take a plea deal, confessing to all his crimes. In return, his sentencing was reduced, meaning he only has to serve 17 years behind bars. However, it still remains unclear whether Dirty Tay will be eligible for parole before his sentencing time is up. Tay remains behind bars with 16 years left to serve, and rightly so. Hello there and thank you for watching this video, and if you've enjoyed this episode then please feel free to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. So what do you think to this case? Do you think 17 years is a fair time to serve behind bars? Let me know your thoughts about this case in the comment section below. And with all that being said, please do stay safe and look after yourself. And I'll see you again real soon, the next time, when evil follows. Bye.